Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome back. So, Master Mirror Expansion will release tomorrow at the time of this recording. And so, no one will really care about what I think about certain cards at that point. So, we've got to get them done today. This is the final batch. All the cards that were revealed recently. So, there's quite a lot here. I'll try and keep it shorter to keep things moving. Okay, so let's let's begin. Thanks for watching. So the first card we've got is a Northern Realm special card, Smoke Them Out. This is a special card for five provisions. Warfare, spawn two volunteers and allied room, boost them by one. So this is six for five. Uh, it's Warfare, so there are some synergies with that, not a whole lot right now. They didn't really boost that up very much. Um, I'm going to give this two stars because I don't think there's much value in the volunteers. They are soldiers, has some synergies. They are humans, has some synergy. But we already got cards which do that. Um, now, if you want devotion specific, you may choose this. But I think there are cards that, that spawn multiple units, uh, which are Northern Round specific anyway. So, two stars for this one. The next card is the special card for Square Tell, Circle of Life. Five provisions, a nature card. Damage an enemy unit by three. Then boost a random square tile unit in your hand by two. If you've got the death blow, boost the target in your hand instead. So, basically, if you get the death blow, you can choose what card it is. Uh, this is actually quite a nice one. I'm going to give it three stars. Now, it's a nature, and obviously they're, they're boosting the nature with the symbiosis uh, value. Uh, this actually has some hand buff advantages, so you might want to try and get a glaze more hand buffed. Uh, you can play this like more than two times because it's square town they can do that a lot um so i i do think it's reasonably decent obviously three damage is nice um most people will take more damage than that though but it's it's viable in in some sort of hand buff deck if you want to go for that if it turns out hand buff is useful this is going to be a decent card so i'll stick it with three stars i think so next up is a northern rounds bronze card three strength for four provisions Kerak Marine. It's a human soldier pirate. I don't believe pirate has any synergy in Northern Realms, but it's got zeal, order, boost an allied unit by two, devotion, boost an allied unit by four instead. So this is another one of those devotion seven for four. Um, it's pretty basic. There's not really anything spectacular about it. It's a very easy seven for four. Um, it's got zeal and order. So, you know, it's a human, it's a soldier, those synergies. I'll give it three stars, I suppose. Um, there's nothing really that interesting about this one, just a 7 for 4. But it's not a 7 for 4 like maybe other ones, where it's self-sufficient. This requires something else to be on the board first, which is a tiniest bit of a negative there. Next up, we've got the Bronze Northern Realms card, Kerak Cutthroat. 3 strength, 4 provisions, Human Soldier Bandit. Uh, Bandit has some synergies, but you never really see it, so it's not really worth anything right now. Formation, order, give an enemy unit bleeding for 3. Um, not really that good. There's no synergies with bleeding. I mean, it is technically a 7 for 4, uh, with the riskiness of, the, if you put it on the back row to get the boost, then you won't be able to use the order straight away. But they have no real synergy with bleeding, so I don't see this being very interesting. Um, let's give it 2 stars. 2 stars because of the lack of, lack of interestingness to it. It's just a card that gives bleeding for, and you know, do we care about that? Not really. Next card is a bronze for Squirtel, the Dun Canal Guardian. Three strength for five provisions. Dryad, Veil, Symbiosis, Deploy, Damage an Enemy Unit by two. So it's five for five with the Veil, which is not probably not that useful for this card. Um, cause I, doubt, I doubt you'd lock Symbiosis because there'd be too many of them and you won't poison it and stuff. Uh, symbiosis. I think it could be quite nice. Is it going to be that useful? Damage a unit by two. Um, I've not seen it being that useful, um, really. I'll give it a two stars. I do want to say, though, the, the face on this guy, this, this character, to me, looks like um, that Spider-Man bloke. What's his name? Tom Holland? Tom Halland? Something like that. Um, to me, he looks like that. I'll try and do a, a comparison. So next up, we've got the Northern Realms Kerak Frigate. Four strength for six provisions with one armor. Order, spawn a volunteer in this row. Crew, 
at the end of your turn, refresh this ability. So this is actually a really interesting card. I'm going to give this four stars now um, because I do think it's quite an interesting card. So basically, crew means when it's between two soldiers. Uh, you can spawn a volunteer on this row with an order and you can replay that over and over and over and over and over again if it's between two soldiers. Now, the volunteer itself is a soldier. So this really only needs to be played next to one soldier initially, uh, to the left of it, because this will spawn the soldier to the right of it. Um, so it's kind of like a self-perpetuating um, Karak Frigate. Now, I do, I do wonder, because I really can't remember now, I'm pretty sure it will spawn the volunteer at the end of the row. So there will be some sort of issues that if you have a a non non soldier to the right of this it is going to break it because it'll spawn the volunteer at the end of the row so it won't be between two soldiers so you have to put this at the end of the row but next to it, it means you're going to have to think about where you put in your soldiers any non soldiers you put on the left uh, i do like that because it's a little bit of element of trying to be strategized and you know think about what you're doing the opponent could um disrupt this with a disloyal unit if they're playing, like, I don't know, uh, a mage infiltrator, I doubt she's a soldier. So play that to the left of this and it'll kind of break it. Although, obviously, you can replay it. Uh, it's at the end of your turn. So this now puts it onto your, your prerogative. You get to choose whether the ability refreshes or not. Like, the opponent can't stop you. They can try and stop you by playing the disloyal units. But eventually, it's up to you to play a soldier or not, and then it'll get the thing. It's really, it's really quite good. So um, they can play disloyal units to prevent it, but you get the you get the choice on whether to play another soldier before the crew ability tries to refresh. So it's always in your ballpark, and the opponent could also possibly kill uh, soldiers off. So. It doesn't have the thing, but again, you get the choice to play another soldier. So this is a really good card. It spawns two strength every turn um, in 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 the method of units. So it might help with drag and stuff. Um, obviously, it's five strength, so it can be removed relatively easily. Uh, so you might need to boost it in some way. I don't believe there's many ways to boost this, boost this apart from like the normal ways. Just give it boost. Use a leader ability or something to get it to six or seven. Um, it can be locked as well movement as well i mean i give this four stars because it's interesting it's a cool card i mean in terms of practicality it might be three um but i'm gonna keep it at a four for now i think but it's a nice card i like it interesting i like the ability to keep spawning next up we've got the bronze square tower card hammer dryad four strength for five provisions dryad symbiosis at the end of your turn if this unit has vitality boost south by one uh, also a very interesting kind of thing you know you give it vitality and it boosts itself so it basically gets double uh, pretty much if if it has four vitality then it will probably get four boost there's the potential to get three and the potential to get five depending on what order whether the vitality goes first or the boost goes first or whatever but uh i i like this one because it's it's not it's a four for five as soon as you put it down you have to work on it it's a combo card um so you have to kind of make sure you've got several things that can give vitality. I'm going to give it three stars. The symbiosis is nice. Um, it's a symbiosis with extra effort you can put in. Um, but on its own, it's not good value. Four for five. Um, but obviously, it's a large combo card. Um, and I really think it's quite interesting to have vitality and boost. I mean, I'm hoping they could build a whole, whole archetype around that. For either Scoia'tael or Northern Realms, they have a, a few things that give vitality. Um, maybe you could make like a Scholar Mage thing, which is all about vitality and boosting or something, you know. But uh, yeah, interesting card, that one. So next up, we've got the Abandoned Girl for Scoia'tael. This is a four strength for four provisions, human, tagged. Order transforms itself into a young dryad without changing power. So this card's really good. Four stars uh, straight away, I think. Uh, definitely very good card now this is going to be beneficial with symbiosis because the young dryad gets symbiosis but harmony as well primarily harmony uh, what's really cool about this is that it triggers the harmony trigger for humans so the human harmony trigger uh, and then it transforms into a dryad so you can place another human 
another abandoned girl human trigger and then change it into a young dryad then play another human like Pavco Gale so you can get three human triggers from this which is really really cool now obviously we have to kind of consider the harmony has been nerfed harmony no longer takes into account the entire board but only the row will get affected um, I think I think it even is nerfed even more that it does count the entire board you know if there's a human on the board then it won't um, a human on your side of the board then it won't actually trigger the harmony but only the harmony <laughs> triggers on the row get the boost oh my god anyway um still it's a really nice card i think it's a really cool idea and thematically it's amazing um but it's used for harmony and it's used for symbiosis in tandem very cool um obviously you've got a you've got the risk of that it will be removed before you order it but i don't think it's that important uh that people will target it a lot so um i like it i like it a lot so this is one that i i actually seem to have skipped over so i do apologize it's blood eagle for skellige it's a golden special card for 10 provisions it's a raid tag which has no synergy right now echo Damage an enemy unit by two, then play a warrior from your deck with a provision cost of eight or less. Deathblow, play a warrior from your deck instead. Bloodthirst three, always trigger the deathblow ability. So I would say this one is definitely a four stars. Um, it's a very good card. Now, the thing about this is that obviously you'll probably want to get the deathblow or the bloodthirst. It's not impossible to kill something for two as well. You'll have a lot of pings and stuff, so you will probably easily get the deathblow um, with this card. It's just that you can play Golden Warriors here and they don't have a provision cost if you get the death blow. So it's not even necessary that you get the death blow to get the ability. You just, you know, you get a higher choice. And there's some really nice warriors in Skellige that you can choose. So this card being Echo means you can play it again. It, it pulls it from your deck. It's just it's such a good pulling card for devotion decks if Skellige have, a, have any of those. Um, it's a really, really good card. It's four stars for me. Um, uh, might even be five stars. Um, it's not going to change the meta, so let's not, let's not say five. Um, it's really, really, really nice card though. Right, we've got the Square Towel Golden Special Card, Shaping Nature. Nine strength. Echo, choose one. Boost an allied unit by six and give it Veil. Boost an allied unit by eight. Boost an allied unit by five and give it five vitality. So I like the three choices. There's several reasons to use each, I think. For nine provisions, I mean, it's six and avail, eight or ten if you last five turns. Um, for nine provisions, not too bad. I suppose it's a nature card, so you will get symbiosis value from it. It's an echo card, so really actually probably quite useful in, um, in a symbiosis deck uh, because you get more nature cards and it's pretty decent. Let's give it three stars. Just raw boosting is probably a bit scary obviously the vitality works really well with that card we saw earlier which boosts when it has vitality so that could potentially be 15 on that card uh, which is pretty cool but that card is going to be super tall which is just going to be crazy scary um, obviously you can give it veil um but you won't be able to give it vitality and veil so i mean it's it's, it's awkward do you really want to boost them by six and give it veil because then it, it's like tall removal um, but it does have Veil then, I suppose. Boosting the unit by 8. It just feels like none of these options are something that you personally want. Because boosting it by high amounts is a bit scary. Um, I could be wrong. It could easily be a 4. I'm going to keep it at 3 for now, though. Um, it's relatively cheap, I think. And so it's got a decent amount of options as well. Next up, we've got the Golden Skelliger card. Skjordl Drummond. 3 strength for 8 provisions, human warrior, devotion, veteran, so if you've got a devotion deck against veteran, deploy, damage an enemy unit by Skjordl's base strength. Uh, base strength is 3, with veteran on round 2 it will be 4, and on round 3 it will be 5. So this card is garbage if you don't have devotion, so this card practically doesn't exist without devotion deck. Therefore, Blood Eagle is really actually quite good, because you need that to draw cards, I would imagine, in devotion deck. Now, in terms of round one with devotion, pretty bad. Round two is passable. Round three is really nice. Uh, five damage plus five strength on the board for eight provisions is quite good. Uh, it's a warrior, so you can pull it from your deck with the um, 
with the blood echo you can resurrect it because there's some warrior resurrect so it's got free reign it's actually really quite nice um this card now obviously resurrected means you have to have used it or it discarded it but i think this is probably the most interesting veteran card that we got um it's still not that interesting but it's it's definitely a good one now you can't boost this it has to be its base power which means it's like a white value and only veteran changes that so we didn't see any card that we can like you know put veteran on a card which is unfortunate that would have been really fun but uh i do like this card i'm gonna give this card four stars i think um i do think it's a really nice human warrior for skelliger if they want to do five damage and five body uh, really nice card in round three Next up, we've got Ulrich. This is a Syndicate Gold. Three strength, two armor for 11 provisions. Ooh, human Firesworn. Intimidate. Deploy, spawn, and play a base copy of a Bronze Firesworn unit from your hand. Devotion, boost it by two. This is actually a really nice card. Um, I get the impression this is a five stars. Um, it's high provision cost. It's the Queen of Dahlia, basically, isn't it? It's the Queen of Dahlia which boosts itself whenever you play you know a crime card so it's got that extra added value uh, it doesn't give the thing shield but it gives it plus two which is kind of protecting it as well um base copy of a bronze fire sworn unit i guess it'd be worth looking through all the fire sworn units and see if there's actually any bronze fire sworn units that you really want to kind of use but i i think it's really really good I think Queen of Dahlia is used amazingly and it's pretty much auto including a lot of decks and I feel like this guy would be the same. So I'm going to give this one 5 stars. Bam! I didn't expect to do that. This next card, Monster Card Gold Winter Queen, 4 strength, 8 provisions, Elf Wild Hunt, Devotion, you get Thrive. At the end of your turn, if there is frost on both enemy rows, summon this unit from your deck to the ranged row. Okay, so I would love to give this card five stars. I love this card. However, I'm probably going to have to give it four stars just for the fact that it's it's obviously going to only be useful for Frost. You, I mean, you could play this with in, in like non-Frost decks and just, you know, pull that one Ard Gaeth card which does Frost. So you're not using Wild Hunt for anything else. You're just using Ard Gaeth or Red Riders. To just put frost on both rows get this card for free so you could just use this for a, a nice tempo um sod it i'll give it a five stars i can't help it uh, this is such a cool card there's no way i think to exploit it and put it back into your deck to pull another turn but um the fact it's got devotion and it comes out of your deck for free its provision cost seems reasonable uh reasonably low so i'm actually really happy about that now, doubling, putting Frost on two enemy rows doesn't have to be a massive hurdle. That's why I'm giving it five stars. Like, in a Frost deck, absolutely 100%. In a non-Frost deck, I mean, one Red Riders gives you the choice to put Frost on both enemy rows. So, you could get, you know, the, um, what is it, two, four, six, eight value from Red Riders, I think, plus this four value. Really, really nice. So, I think even in non-Frost decks, this could be used. Um, if you just have one Red Riders. Now, Red Riders is a special card that puts Frost on one row for four turns or both rows for two turns each. I it's I don't think it can be tutored, though, so that might be the small hiccup. But love this card. I give it five stars. I convinced myself on that one. Next up, another monster card, the Aperian Phantom. Four strength, one armor for seven provisions. Zeal, Veil, Order melee, damage an enemy unit by three. At the end of your turn, if order is not used, boost south by one. Now, what's good about this is the second part, at the end of your turn, if order is not used, boost south by one, is not restricted by the melee. So movement counters half of the card, but not all of it. Uh, it's got veil, so it can't be locked, which is amazingly good. Um, I'm going to give this one four stars. I think this one, which is like just a, a boost, a south boost, um, so it would come down as a six strength card, sort of, where you need six removal to get rid of it, which is very rare. And this card won't particularly, it doesn't seem that fearsome. 
like this card and the beast together will kind of like work off each other and stuff so I think it's actually a really really nice card and if they don't deal with it then you can always end your round with three damage so I, I give it four stars I do like that card a lot so the next card is a Nilfgaardian Urchon of Erlenwald four strength gold one armor seven provisions veil zeal order melee transform into Dooney at the end of your turn boost a random allied unit by one so this is human cursed knight so you have to consider some synergies there it's not an agent it's not an aristocrat um, so there's not in, as far as I'm aware much synergy there but Dooney is a seven strength unit with immunity okay so this is kind of like the one we saw previously when you use the order there uh, it just does three damage this again is just gaining three value when you transform it against three value obviously that gap value is increased or decreased depending on whether you were boosted or um wounded if you if some guy wounds this down to one transforming it into dooney will allow you to like get all that value back and it'll be a seven so you could use this guy to absorb a couple of pings which is kind of nice boosting random allied units um randomly is is tough if it's uh if this is one of the first cards to go down and, and seems to stick, then it could boost the, the cards you put down subsequently. This is not going to survive as long as the other one because he's going to stick at 5 for a long time. If you boost him to make him safe, then obviously if you transform him, he loses value, uh, possibly, or at least loses some value. So I'm going to give this one a 3 stars. I'm not... It's not as good, I don't think. Um... It's obviously a tiny bit worse than the previous one because it don't keep itself alive. Um, but if you can defend it, then maybe. And it loses value when you use the transform. So I don't think it's as good as the previous one. So for that reason, I'm giving it three stars. <laughs> I, three stars. We'll come back to that later. The next one is a square tower card. Four strength, one armor for seven provisions. Dunker. The Dryad. Veil, Zeal, order melee damage an enemy unit by three. At the end of your turn, if order is not used, boost a random square tower unit in your hand by one. So this is, um, again, very similar to the previous ones. This one stays at three again. Three stars, I think, if I'm following my, uh, if I'm following my train. This one is going to be easier to remove. It's just a five. Um, the positive about this, though, compared to the previous one, is that if you do boost it to keep it alive, you're not going to lose that, that value if you if you use its order ability because it's just three damage. Um, the carryover is actually pretty more valuable, I think. Um, we seem to be getting a couple of things which have carryover now for Square Tower. There's several hand buff options. We saw one earlier. So if you want hand buff, then this is going to give it to you. It is a random Square Tower unit in your hand, so you probably and never actually going to get the value where you want it, you know, like on Skags or on a Glaze or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I'll give it three stars because of its removability. Otherwise, I would have pushed this to four pretty easily, I think. And and the random boost is probably not going to go where you want it to go. Next up is a Northern Realms card, five strength, nine provisions, Ildiko. Ildiko, maybe. Human Mage. Order, boost an allied unit by five. Inspired, whenever you play a Northern Realms unit, give it zeal. Um, so this could be worth 10 for nine, plus the zeal option. Um, just, I mean, most Northern Realms decks manage without the zeal. Like, zeal, they manage, you know. Um, I do like the card. I think it has a lot of potential value. Again, it's removable quite easy unless you can protect it. Um, and it's a very powerful and interesting ability, given everything zeal. But again, you can't rely on this card, I don't think. Um, it'll probably will get locked or removed or something like that. So I'll give it uh, three stars for now, I think. I think what you want in Northern Rounds is boosting several units by like two or three to keep them alive. You don't want to boost one thing by five. Um, or maybe you want to boost one unit by five one pings so you can get value off of 
um, you know, uh, the tried of infantry. The zeal, I think everybody's, they, they work with it. You know, most things have formation now that are really important. Uh, so you can use that. You could place this down and it's like removal bait, but at nine provisions, that's an expensive removal bait. Um, so I'll give it three stars for now. I do like the ability though. Another, actually, another nice ability that I thought was pretty interesting is uh, King Bellohun. Five, five strength, nine provisions, human. Whenever you play a unit with power less than four, set its power to four. And if you have devotion, increase the power limit to five. So really, you have to go for all the cards that are one strength uh, to make the most out of this. So you've got Philippa. Bam, five strength. Really kind of nice there. Um, you've got Field Medics, five strength. That's kind of nice. Um, so there's a lot of cool things. Arbalist now go to five. That's a pretty cool card. So this one and the previous one are cards that you just try your look with, I feel. You can place a defender down, place these behind it, see if the opponent has enough removal. Again, it can be locked, it can be removed at five. It's pretty easy to do so. Um, may not stay on the board for more than one turn, even if they can't remove it instantly. But uh, I do think it's super interesting. I don't think it's, it's only when you play a unit, which is actually, oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, it's whenever a unit comes onto the board, that would have been great with volunteers and stuff. It might have been too powerful, but uh, I'll give it, i give it, I think three stars because of the limited cards that you could use with it to like really exploit it. And again, it's going to be another one of those ones where five strength is actually quite easy and for nine provisions bit more of a gimmick card than actual pure value. I'd love to see it used though. Um, I might give this a brand seal of approval to see how much I can exploit it. Um, because I do think it's a quite an interesting card, this one. Next up, we've got the Squirtail Golden card, Frexinet. Five strength, eight provisions, human. So this will trigger Harmony Human. Uh, there's a, we've got quite a few humans now, but you know, it's quite nice. Deploy melee, boost a dryad in your hand by two. Deploy range, spawn a young dryad on this row, devotion, use both abilities. So you probably want devotion, of course. Um, young dryad, I believe, is a two strength naturally. Um, so that is worth four. So it's a nine for eight. Two of that is carryover. Now it has to be a dryad. Is a glaze a dryad? Yes, she is. Therefore, a glaze is pretty nice. You won't be able to use this on Sheldon Skaggs. Not that you probably would anyway. But... Um, it's kind of nice. I do like it. I think it's got some symbiosis value, um, which is kind of cool. It's got some human synergies. So I'll give it three stars on that one. Uh, nothing massively over the top, but uh, it does what it does. And um, if you want hand buff and you want a young dryad symbiosis, then this card does both. So pretty nice. So next up, we've got the Scoia'tael evolving card. So this is Ethne. So first of all, Ethne Young Queen, then she goes to Ethne Mother, and then Ethne Wrath of the Broccolon. So first of all, she's 6 strength for 11 provisions again, she's the Dryad all the way through. Spawn a Young Dryad on this row, at the start of the round 1 in hand or deck transform. So she's worth 8 for 11 in round 1. It's not the worst thing because of the symbiosis value 2 that you could possibly get, so if you really need to, she won't be too bad I don't think. Then phase two is Ethne Mother. Spawn two young dryads on the road. So that's uh, 10 points for 11 provisions plus the symbiosis synergy. If you have devotion, you get to the third form. She has veil, symbiosis herself, and spawn two young dryads on the row. So she's still actually only 10 for 11, but then you've got three symbiosis triggers. So, you know, if you use a nature card afterwards, then you get an extra three strength. Okay, so I'm going to give this one four stars, I think, because like all the other ones require you to play stuff, play Agents, play Firesworn, whatever. Uh, what's nice about this one is that that playing extra value engine is not solely on Ethne. Um, they spread around the board with two Young Dryad Symbiosis triggers and an Ethne Wrath of the Broccolon trigger. So... What's really nice is while the Usurper, uh, Jack Stalderberg, Howard on Crate and all those are engines that produce value as you play things, if they are removed, 
then the engine ceases to be, but this does not. This still has two of the little engines producing symbiosis value. So I do think this one is quite good. Four stars. Well done. So that was actually the final card. So Master Mirror Expansion, super hyped about it. I think I gave three five-star cards. Uh, plus one more that someone changed my mind about in the comments for the Forest Protector. So I think I gave four five stars, I think. Uh, I remember them, I think. It's Brathens, and I still say Brathens, really good value and wide use, nice and flexible, goes in a lot of decks. Winter Queen, it seemed to be a really nice card to get out with that has Thrive if you have a Devotion deck, and you don't even have to be a Frost deck to get that value, you just have to play Red Riders and she'll come out for free, which is pretty cool. Ulrich was the third one that was in today's video, which is basically like another Queen Adalia for uh, Fire Sworn decks. And finally, the uh, Forest Protector that someone changed my mind, uh, which is 5 Strength, 11 Provisions, Replay a Nature card. So, I enjoyed that. I really liked it. Um, a lot of cool cards. Um, we don't have much time to, to uh, you know dwell on all these cards and think about them because it is releasing tomorrow at the time of this recording so thank you for watching i'll hopefully see you with some good decks in the not too distant future and um have an experiment with all these cool cards that we can see thanks for watching everybody take care and i'll see you again as always to play some more gwent very soon